So you may be trying to figure out how to hook up your heat pump uh, system with your boiler uh, for alternate heat. So you use your heat pump when it's you know, above 40 degrees and your oil fired baseboard heat when it's uh, below 40 degrees and you have a Nest thermostat. Uh, this video is going to show you how I connected that system to make it work for me. Uh, and I'll do another video talking about the perceived uh, cost savings. Uh, even with electric prices as they are in Connecticut, uh, which is about 25 to 30 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, depending on where you live. Basically what I had to do, I had this interface board um, that they had previously installed. So this is supposed to make it easy to interface um, rather than have to um, use your own wiring or whatever. It just comes with this connector here, plugs into that CN105, comes out through the hole in the top. And then this is supposed to do all the logic, basically supposed to allow you to just use uh, thermostats, normal wiring, and do all that conversion for you. Um, what was weird for me was that I'm also trying to do uh, oil heat, uh, backup uh, aux heat. In order to do that, I had to basically get a, um, a relay here that I installed. Um, you can see. Okay, so I'm going to walk through this heat pump schematic uh, and how I got it to connect to use both the heat for the boiler, uh, use the Nest thermostat for the heat for the boiler, as well as controlling two-stage heating and cooling for my Mitsubishi heat pump system. So in background in yellow are kind of the major pro um, pieces of it, and you've seen through the video the various other portions. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of discuss how this is, starting with the thermostat. So uh, the Nest thermostat, when you pull it off the wall, again, uh, it's very clearly labeled. Um, the things we're going to be using are G, O, B, R, C, W2, Aux, C, Y1, and Y2. Now, the Y1 and Y2 are going to go um, to the double pull, double throw switch up in the attic or wherever you have it. Um, your W2 line, which is your Aux heat, is going to go to the boiler, so... Ideally, uh, wherever this thermostat was, uh, also is a thermostat for the heat. Um, so you, you should have previously had baseboard heating, and you're trying to hook up uh, your heat pump system to control heating for that. Uh, but the line to the boiler to control the boiler is what's going to go in the W2 block um, on the left. And then that's just going to go to the boiler like it normally did. Um, your RC or RH uh, are just power. And those uh, are going to go uh, to a transformer somewhere. Um, not necessarily required, but you see in the top right of my diagram, there's a liquid detect detecting switch. Um, that's just th something installed on my system. Doesn't necessarily need to be there, but um, that was in a plastic pan underneath the whole unit in the attic. So if there was like a leak or the condensation was dripping out, it would collect in the pan and not drip through the ceiling. And if it detected that liquid, it would cut off power to prevent the unit from running. So uh, that's kind of shown there. And the NC represents normally closed, meaning that normally power is applied to the whole system. And if the switch detects liquid, then it would open, preventing power from going to the uh, Mitsubishi pack board, which would in turn prevent the system from turning on. Um, so another thing you'll see there is on the, this is back to the left side, uh, the OB line, that's the heat pump um, control or for reversing valve uh, and I'll show you in the Nest thermostat where that is as well uh, and how to set up the Nest thermostat uh, and then the G is for the fan um, that's everything with the Nest thermostat that needs to be connected so for me the rest of these components everything to the right aside from the thermostat is up in the attic um, talk about the transformer real quick so I, I wrote in here 120 volts to 24 volts uh, AC uh, it could be 208 to 24 it could be 208 to 28 it could be 240 to 28 um, something in that realm some higher voltage down to about 24 to 28 volts uh, that's what's going to supply power to the pack board uh, as well as your nest thermostat so um, you can see there the um, the transformer supplying power to that liquid detecting switch, which again is normally shut, meaning that that wire uh, through the liquid detecting switch to the R on the Mitsubishi pack board is all one um, 
continuous line. And then that is connected to TC on the Mitsubishi pack board. And then it's also connected to your RC on the uh, Nest thermostat. Uh, so that's everything with the transformer, uh, with the exception of that TR. So that's just the other side of the transformer that's going to connect to the TR on the Mitsubishi pack board. Okay, so now let's look at the common. Uh, so that's that blue line uh, right in the middle of the screen. So you'll see the 24 volt, <clears throat> 24 volt common on the Nest thermostat. It connects to the C uh, on the Mitsubishi pack board, and it also connects to the other side of the double pole, double throw switch. Um, so that uh, it kind of looks like the five is labeling that, that hole, but it's not. Uh, it's an unlabeled hole on the coil line there, um, but it's gonna be the bottom of the double pole, double throw switch uh, on the right side. Uh, so that's that line there. All right, so I already talked about the heat pump uh, line. That just goes to the left side of the coil. Uh, for the double pull, double throw switch. So again, that's going to be the very bottom uh, if you happen to buy the same uh, part number uh, that I had. Um, but it's going to be whatever is controlling the relay. So one side is the OB, uh, the other side is the common, and that all connects up uh, as shown in the picture there. Um, so the W2 talked about that uh, to the boiler. Again, that is uh, the alternate heat. That's going to connect only to the W2 and the Nest thermostat, and then it's going to go down uh, to wherever your boiler is. Mine's in the basement, um, but that was a separate line that was already installed in the system uh, and already controlled the baseboard heat. So uh, again, just instead of plugging it into a separate thermostat in my wall, it's now being controlled also by the Nest. And then the last thing here are the Y1 and Y2. So I'll start on the left side with the Nest thermostat. This is where it needs to connect to the double pole, double throw switch. And I'll talk a little bit more about the logic there, uh, but you can see the Y1 uh, goes to terminal number one and the Y2 goes to terminal number four on the double pole, double throw switch. Now on the, in the attic uh, where this double pole, double throw switch is located, uh, you'll see terminals two and three, and that's gonna go to your W1, which is traditionally heat and Y1, which is traditionally cooling. Uh, and it has to be in this order because at least for this system, uh, when OB is not turned on, uh, meaning that the heat pump reversing valve is not on, it should be putting out heat. Um, and that is why W1, which is again, a heating uh, signal, is gonna be, have that contact normally closed. So when the Nest thermostat senses, hey, I need some heat, uh, and it's above 40 degrees outside or whatever temperature you have set in the Nest thermostat for outside air temperature uh, to switch between your alternate heat and your heat pump, um, it's gonna say, hey, uh, I need one stage cooling, so y one's gonna turn on, power is gonna go to terminal one. Since that contact is shut, it's gonna go to terminal two, and then through that W1 line to the Mitsubishi pack board, which is then gonna call for single stage heating, uh, which is also gonna turn on G for fan uh, to get your fan going. Um, and then that's gonna pump hot air through your house. Now, if it was the reverse where, hey, it's hot outside and I need to turn my air conditioning on, um, again, it's just gonna be like you set your normal thermostat for it's you know 73 in your house and you want it to be 71, turn it down to 71. Now the Nest thermostat is gonna send a signal to uh, turn on OB, uh, the OB line, and that's gonna power now your coil in the double pole, double throw switch, which is gonna switch those contacts. So instead of uh, either two and five being shut there, so the signal between one and two and four and five, it's gonna now shut the signal between one and three and four and six, and then open the other one. So one and two and four and five will no longer be connected and now you have uh, your Y1 and Y2 from the Nest thermostat going to terminal one or terminal four, uh, all the way through to terminal three and terminal six. And then that's gonna plug into your Mitsubishi pack board, Y1 and Y2. And then in turn, your Mitsubishi system is gonna call for cooling um, and then start blowing cold air out through, through the system. So that is why I needed uh, this double pull, double throw switch uh, to be put in here because the Mitsubishi pack board uh, doesn't really sync up with how the Nest thermostat 
uh, works for heating and cooling um, because I needed to, you need to be able to specifically control the reversing valve within this thermostat uh, the way the OB, um, it only gives you that OB option. So to interface between the Nest thermostat and the pack board, I basically had to trick it into being a more dumb system uh, in which you're controlling the OB directly. So the pack board is supposed to make it very easy to connect to a thermostat that gives you these Y1, Y2, W1, W2 options. With the Nest thermostat, they only give you a Y1, Y2, and an OB. Um, the W's can't, they do exist, uh, but if you want to use the alternate heat, then that's reserved for W2, uh, and that goes to your boiler. So I had to retrick the system into letting me use the pack board. Now, again, I think you could just use the pack board if you just wanted to use your heat pump system for uh, both heat and cooling. This will not work uh, if you also have some sort of alternate heat, uh, at least with how the Nest thermostat is, is connected. So. Again, this diagram, it's been up here for a little while. If you have any questions about it, I'd be more than happy to answer it. I tried to make it as color-coded as possible um, and make it as easy as possible. But again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. All right, so now I'll walk you through the uh, Nest setup here of your system and how to check it out. So the first thing, so this uh, 51 degrees, it's showing you the temperature that it is outside. It's getting that from the internet. Um, and that's what, what it's going to use to determine, uh, later I'll show you how to set up the temperature at which it switches between the heat pump and the, uh, baseboard heating or your alternate heat. Um, so again, uh, go over to settings Then you're going to scroll over to equipment, select that. And it's going to show you what equipment is detected. Um, so again, just like I showed you in the diagram there, it's got Y1 and Y2 for your heating, stage 1 and 2, heating and cooling, uh, G for your fan, uh, OB for the heat pump, which is the reversing valve uh, for your heat pump system. Um, I have the RC and RH both plugged in, but it only uses one because it's just uh, power. Uh, 24 volt common, and then alternate heat, which goes into your W2 or your AUX. So, Again, like I said, you could use that pack board if you just wanted to use that system only for your heating and cooling. It would make it very easy. You plug in the Y1, Y2, W1, W2 to your pack board up in your attic, and it works, but then you would not be able to use the alternate heat, uh, which you want to be able to use. So um, that's why I had that double pull, double throw switch thrown in there. Um, but let's go through the rest of the setup here. So continue. Um, it's going to tell you, hey, uh, power wires detected, no connection to equipment. Again, not that important. All right, and it's showing you what all is available to you. So heat pump heating, heating stage two, an alternate heat, heat pump cooling, cooling stage two, and a fan. Uh, and you could test through the various things there. So um, probably one thing I want to show you that's important, again, when you click on heat type, uh, that's where it's going to let you say like, hey, forced air. Um, yep. One thing that's important is the heat pump setting. So when you come in here, it tells you, hey, does your heat pump use an O-wire common or B-wire less common? Again, I have it selected for O, uh, and it works fine. Now, the dual fuel setup, uh, this is where it's very important to set the outside temperature at which you want to use the heat pump. Uh, so above this temperature, so for me, above 40 degrees, uh, outside air temperature, it's going to use the heat pump system and below 40 degrees, it's going to use the alternate heat. Now I use this temperature. Uh, I kind of played around with it, but I had it set colder. I found the heat pump was running like almost constantly in colder temperatures than this. Uh, so if it was like 38, 30, it'd probably be fine. Uh, 36 started to get way too cold and the, the condenser or the compressor outside started to get frosted over. Uh, so 40 degrees I found is like a good uh, temperature to start with. For just trying to uh, balance your system with uh, the best efficiency between using the heat pump and baseboard heating uh, and I'll, I'll do a separate video where it talks about where I talk about specifically how much I think this has saved me uh, and that's with Connecticut electric prices which run in the range of 25 to 30 cents a kilowatt hour uh, you don't really need to mess around with pro setup um, and that's pretty much it 
So assuming you set up your system uh, just like I showed you there, uh, you should be all good. And uh, that's it. And then you can go back to your system there. Uh, you could turn on heating or cooling or auto from this system here. Um, I just have it set to heat right now. All right, hope that helps.